Hey guys, Dory Patrick here. Happy Tuesday. It's Talky Tuesday from the studio. How have you been doing? We are doing okay over here. Today has been uh, kind of been off to a weird slow start. I started off with a headache and uh, was able to get that managed fairly quickly, but those of you who have headaches or migraines, you know uh, the medicine can work, but it can also slow you down and make you feel a little sluggish. So I feel like I'm just now getting started and it's like midday. Anyway, um, otherwise, uh, I think we've all been doing okay over here. We've got um, a beautiful coat of snow here in Cedar Rapids. Um, got several inches, uh, I think that was Friday. And um, I love it, mostly. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was, it was a nice, light, fluffy snow, so it was super easy to uh, shovel. And uh, Callie Mae is in the next room stirring, so maybe you'll hear her bark. She's always on alert for the postman. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, so it's snowy here, and uh, it was fairly easy to shovel. You know, we both work from home, so it's easy for us to get around. We don't have a whole lot of stress with needing to commute like some of you do. So um, I sympathize to those of you who are still commuting. Um, I have been dealing with a few health things um, and also last week I was able to meet with an allergist and I think that we are making some progress in uh, figuring a few things out. I won't go into all the details but um, it feels good to make some progress in finding some answers when it comes to your body and your health. So I'm really happy about that. Um, I am here in the studio. I am still painting fabric, as you know, if you're following me over on the socials. Um, and I'm hoping within the week or two, I can tell announce what it's all for. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's exciting. And um, I'm a little, uh, nervous about getting it all done but I think that it's gonna happen and I really had I had a great uh, fabric painting session yesterday and I'm going to show you just a few of my favorites um, and again these are all just going into uh, wall art pieces these are all going to be stitched into wall art so um, I'm doing a lot of just kind of things that read as a solid that I can incorporate into designs um, and also some fun patterns. So like this was just watered down. I think it was acrylic ink. And then these are um, the Neo color to the water soluble crayons. So I just scribbled on this after it was dry and I set it with um, a matte varnish. So uh, yeah, isn't that cool? gives such a great texture um, and of course you know I'm doing lots of polka dots I have um, a whole bunch of little daubers that are uh, sponges that I use to do all my polka dots that's a cool texture too this is an assortment of fabrics um, really thin cottons from the flower sack towels um, heavy canvas that will be good for some more sculptural pieces. Uh, this is a fun one that I did recently, just dragging a paint tube across the the inked fabric. But see, like even the back is fun. So I'm gonna try when I start stitching these together to not be precious about it. I think that's the biggest challenge, isn't it? But so I've been painting fabric. Um, I've done a little bit of work in my art journal, which I think I'm gonna share over on the socials later. Um, a few, a couple of pieces in my journal, I think are gonna make really great um, note cards. So, um, we'll, yeah, that'll be super fun. Some fun little sayings. Um, the Etsy shop has been really busy, so thank you so much for that, all of you who have been keeping me busy in my Etsy shop. 
um, I'm actually really low on paintings, so I hope I can get over the hump with this fabric project soon and um, get back to getting some stuff um, in the Etsy shop. Um, and if you follow me, uh, you know that this is a new sticker design we added to the Etsy, which is super fun. It makes me want to paint more of these. I just love it. So anyway, today we're going to chat a little bit about uh, the planner. The planner that I promised uh, several weeks ago, um, kind of how, what I use and how I organize myself. Um, this becomes kind of my little Bible that I uh, take around with me through the year and keep track of things in. Um, so it, there are a couple of videos coming up after this one. Uh, one kind of explaining what kind of journal I like to use and then I'm also doing um, kind of a quick little video showing you how I decorate the cover and what I do to make that fun. And then I'll pop on again later and just show you a little bit inside of what I do to use it. So I hope you love that. Um, it's so good to see you again. I hope you're having a good week so far and uh, I'll see you later on uh, towards the end of the video. Bye. Okay, hi again guys. Hey, I just wanted to give you a quick peek at the journal that I'm going to alter a little bit. Um, I'm gonna try to bring this up close and hopefully you can see. It's a moleskin daily planner. Um, I think this is about eight and a half or eight by five and a half ish in size. Um, it's the one that has a page for every day of the year and this really helps me in my my day-to-day -day planning my list making and I'll show you some of my older books later on too um, but for now yeah moleskin daily planner um these are kind of hard to come by I'm not sure if there have been some <sighs> troubles with shipping or supplies or or what um i i was lucky enough to find this one at an art store in minneapolis um and nabbed it right away when i saw it my hubby got one too because he uses it for um keeping track of his workouts and his weightlifting um and this color is i think they were calling it ice green yeah ice green which I love, 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 love. So usually whatever color the cover is, I use that as the springboard for how I, how I decorate the cover. So um, we'll get started on prepping the cover for the new year. Okay, see you in a bit. Okay, so here we go. I start off by sanding the surface with a medium grit sandpaper. That just kind of gives it a little extra tooth so that uh, the things I add to it will adhere a little bit better. Now here I am just adding some, I think it's just white acrylic paint. It could be gesso, but I don't know for sure and it doesn't matter a whole lot. Um, I'm also adding some other colors of acrylic paint. Just getting messy, having fun, scratching into the surface a little bit with the handle of the paintbrush. I do a lot of dabbing too with the paper towel. That kind of gives it some fun texture and also helps it dry a little faster. Um, looks like I dipped into some blue and I'm making some more marks with the paint and some more dabbing and it looks like I've got the heat tool out to kind of speed up the drying a little bit. And you don't need a heat tool to set any of this. I was just kind of doing it to speed things up a little bit. And then that is a Stabilo All Pencil. That is my favorite pencil of all time. I usually buy them by the dozen when I go to Blick. It is a water soluble pencil, which means it'll react to water and uh, 
wet products. So that is some matte varnish that I'm using to seal the marks in so they don't go anywhere. Some more acrylic paint. Looks like I added some white to some of the green that I already had going. And some more dabbing and some more drying <laughs> with that fabulous heat gun. I also have a hair dryer in the studio too that's ready to go. So when I need to dry something big, like if I'm working on a big canvas, I uh, keep that handy too. And looks like I'm dabbing in some yellow. And some more drying to speed things up. I wish that I could work this fast <laughs> in real life. Okay, so here are some Neocolor 2 um, crayons. If you are a mixed media artist, you've probably heard of these. They are thebomb.com. They are a creamy, wonderful um, water-soluble crayon that you can activate with water if you want to. In this case, I'm just scribbling and uh, sealing with some more matte varnish so that it all stays put. I go through a lot of that matte varnish. It helps a lot to speed things along and keep your layers in place if you want to. And then some more drying. And then I think I get, yep, this is the Aposca pen. Uh, those are paint pens that are fabulous and right on every surface. I think that particular one is an old one that's almost done, so I didn't get very far with that one. But I switched over to uh, the pink one, and uh, then I think I grab a red one. Yeah, and you see I dab the marks a lot. Um, I kind of like an imperfect mark, so uh, I dab it and kind of mush it up a little bit. So that's a scrap of painted canvas and I've gotten in the habit lately of um, putting the year down in the bottom right hand corner. So that's what I'm doing there. Um, taking a Sharpie marker, writing the year on it and then I will, looks like I'm trimming it up a little and taking the heavy matte gel and gluing it down. Heavy matte gel is great for those heavy fabrics and heavy papers that you need to stick down. And then the final touch is that satin varnish. Um, that's by Liquitex, that's my favorite one. Um, I love all their varnishes, but the satin is what I had handy, so that's what I grabbed. Um, but obviously you could do any finish that you want. So I, um, do this to seal everything, just to keep it uh, protected, uh, so nothing scratches off, keeps it all sealed in there. Um, I think I do a second coat on this. I usually do two or three coats, depending on how much stuff I've put on the outside of the book. I think, yep, we're gonna do one more coat. <laughs> Of the varnish yeah so then I just um, I, maybe I even did one more coat after this off camera just to seal in everything I don't remember exactly but I would just leave this on my work table to sit overnight and then the next day um, you know it's just good to go and you're ready to rock your life with your new planner Hey guys, so we're back. Um, just wanted to share a couple little notes about the planner and how I use it. Um, I think it was back in 2018 or 19, I can't remember. I took an online class um, that was presented by Lisa Congdon on Creative Live. And if I can find the link to the class, if it's still active, I will uh, share the link in the description. It was a really great class on uh, 
specifically for creatives and artists on organizing themselves and their time and their thoughts. Um, I think, and she's right, I think she mentioned in the class, one of the biggest sources of stress is um, worrying about what you're forgetting, right? Like worrying about uh, hanging on to that thought or that idea or that um, bolt of lightning that you just had or uh, remembering to mail something or whatever. And if you can just get it down in some way that works for you, that really alleviates the stress. So when I'm really in the zone with using my planner, I often will sit down with it at the end of the work day and think ahead to the next day about what I'm hoping to get accomplished. Now, mind you, sometimes I get really grand ideas about, uh, what I think I can get done. So one of the things she teaches in the class is using a rolling to-do list. So the things, and it's super fun to cross things off your list when you get them done, but the things that don't get done then get put on the next day's rolling to-do list or, you know, a week ahead or whenever it is that you need to, you know, pencil that in to get done. The rolling to-do list just keeps things moving in a forward motion so that nothing is getting forgotten. So when I'm really in the groove with using this thing, I will go ahead and at the end of the day, check in with what I got done, what I didn't get done, think ahead to the next day. Okay, can I fit in these things I didn't get done or do I need to push them out more or da 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 da. And um you get in the habit of taking care of the priority items first. Um, you know, getting the big what is it that say there's a saying and of course it's escaping me, but it's basically do the crappy thing first and get it out of the way. So the thing that you may be dreading or putting off for whatever reason get that done first and cross it off your list. Um, it's also a great place to break down large projects. And in her class, she really, she shares a great way of um, organizing yourself by taking that big project that seems really overwhelming and breaking it down into smaller to-do lists. Um, so yeah, so here it is, the 2022. And as you can see, I've been doing this for a few years now, but, um, I kind of also treat this as a little journal. So I save all my old ones because I go back. I go back and look at things. Um, you know, sometimes there's an idea in there that I scrawled down, you know, to a year or two ago that I might want to revisit. So sometimes I just sit down with these and page through them and go, oh, yeah, I had that, you know, brilliant idea a while back. But um yeah, I, I have found this to be just a really fun, um, a great way to stay organized, but also a fun, um, almost like a time capsule for that year. You can look back and see what you were doing that year. Um, and you can go as creatively as you'd like. Like this is a um, the inside cover. I have gotten in the habit now of just collaging it with things because I just love opening it up and seeing all images that I love. So yeah, and as the year goes on, you start filling it in with things that, um, you know, stickers that people give you or just little, little reminders of the wonderful or not so wonderful year that you've had. Sometimes I just find a little image in a magazine I'm about to throw away and I just put that in there because it just makes me happy. But um, I don't know if I have a real, oh yeah, I'm not going to really show you my list um, in depth, but you can kind of see, you know, you run, you run your list down and then the things you don't get done, um, you move to the next day and on and on. And you know, there are days that I forget to use this or there are slower times that I you know, don't have much to record. Sometimes I'll just go back and fill those pages in with drawings or whatnot. So yeah, it's been, it's been a great tool for me. And I hope that it kind of inspires you a little bit to, you know, take your planner in a new direction. 
Um, I'd love to hear different ways. I love life hacks. So if you have any great suggestions um, of how you are organizing your creative business, I sure would love to hear them. And um, I hope you're all doing great. And I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.